Hello and welcome to this video. I am really glad that you are sharing part of your day with me today. In this video, I am going to talk about how simple living has changed our lives and show you what a day in the life looks like, a bit of our day, a regular weekday. You're gonna see a day in the life of simple living for us now in the fourth year of minimalism, decluttering, and simplifying the complicated parts of our lives. My personal journey of implementing simple living into our home and into our life began with a need to declutter. I say that specifically and carefully. I wanna highlight the word need. I had a need to declutter. I didn't start this life by actually decluttering items out of our house. I was stuck. I did not know how to declutter. Our house was overrun with clutter and I was stressed all the time. I had anxiety that I didn't even know I had that was stemming from stuff. I did not know how to begin decluttering, let alone what minimalism or simple living would even come to look like in our home today on this day that I am sharing with you. Decluttering led to minimalism and it led to minimalism about stuff first. Keeping fewer things led to other changes in our life. Similar to peeling an onion one part at a time. Each category I decluttered from our home made me think about how money had been spent on those items and how new items then came into our home. It led to budgeting, debt reduction, and an evaluation of how our time was spent as a family of five. Getting rid of items led to the complete lifestyle change that I'm sharing with you now, uh, you know, in our fourth year. So this didn't happen overnight. This didn't happen in a week. This has been years of slowly tweaking and simplifying. Nowadays, I think about minimalism as just one aspect of our lifestyle and how we're living. And I think about, well, everything through this lens of simplifying. I could never have imagined the life we have now at the start of this four years ago. My, my personal definition of simple living has been sculpted and created over the last few years by decreasing the number of items we own one item at a time, one day at a time, by recognizing how busy our life had felt and slowly figuring out all the ways that I could adjust it to make it feel intentional rather than chaotic and stressful. Yes, yes. So what page is it on? Okay. The day in the life that you're spending with me today was filmed on a weekday, which is usually spent homeschooling when my husband's at work. And this is our dining room. It's one of the main areas that our supplies for school are organized. Before minimalism, I didn't have a dedicated space. I had thousands of school supplies, games, puzzles, books, and it was impossible for me to know what we even had available to us to fuel learning in our house. I had a large Calyx Ikea shelf filled with things as well as a basement filled to the brim with boxes. You couldn't even see the walls. Now I have our material materials for this year organized on two carts and that includes kindergarten, second grade, and third grade. We have a home library organized by topic so I can easily find reference books now. And keeping less and being intentional about what we've chosen to keep makes it easier for me to focus on what the kids need to learn. And this focus on how our day functions and feels rather than how it looks is a manifestation of simple living for me that took a lot of time. It's now not complicated, it's flexible, it elevates our time together. And our school day mostly starts here at the table, but it happens all over the house. Sometimes on the couch, the library, the car, co-op, Managing my expectations on where school is done is another way that I have uncomplicated our life. We have a lesson plan for each week that I make, but I use it as a guide for myself. My son that you see in the video right now is six years old. He's in kindergarten. I am actually in my sixth year of homeschooling. My nine-year-old, I started when he was three. 
I'm much more easygoing about worksheets and how a child learns a concept now, this far into homeschooling. This year, my focus with my kindergartner here is connection, encouraging questions, and developing his self-confidence. He likes school and worksheets, and so allow me to show you a glimpse of what his school day looks like. Okay, it's lots of hooks. Wait, do I do another one? Uh, I'm Would you... trying to read it. Okay. It's fine. So if that was a really long story, if you'd like to stop there, we can stop there. Or take a break and come back to it. That was a lot of reading for you. Take a break and come back to it. Okay, good. That was a lot of reading, pal. Here, I'm going to do this. That was really good. You got that? That was a lot of reading. Do you want me to write it and then you're going to trace it? Like with a marker or a pencil? Marker. All right, you write it and me trace it with a black marker. Okay, can you read the words to me? Double shall wag forever and ever. So that word is rain, R-E-I-G-N. I did write my letters close together. I'll have to remember to write them farther apart for you to trace. That's T-H. Yeah. T-H. Right, and what do T and H do together? They stick their tongues out together, don't they? Yeah. Our Bible study is pretty simple. We just turn to the next page in their journals, the uh, scripture for the week. They write it and they draw the picture. It's good writing practice for all three of my kids, kindergarten, second grade, third grade. It's also a time of reflection. We chat about what the scripture might mean to them or what words stood out to them. And they draw a picture and they color and they just talk about the way it makes them feel. And it's just another opportunity for connection, uh, just to review the Bible, and each kid kind of does it differently, but it's nice to sit with them and do it together. It's on each page. Oh, and then the end. Would you like to do that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's fun. That's fun. So he's finishing his language arts lesson. We use All About Reading. He's uh, about three quarters of the way through level one. He's doing a beautiful job and it's two stories that were assigned reading today. And so he's just reading that out loud to me. And it's kindergarten. I just really let Jackson dictate how his day can go. Most of the time he's amenable to what I have planned or what I want him to do and what I want him to learn. And this is his math book. We do one page of math, math each day, one lesson from All About Reading. Uh, we might do some handwriting or I'll tag team that with Bible study to do handwriting. And keep it really simple and give him an opportunity that one-on-one -on -one learning with me to ask questions, do some deeper learning. It also helps me figure out where he is. Bible study social studies, science, music, art. I usually do those subjects as required by the state of Maryland. I usually do them together as a morning collective. That's what we call it when all three kids. Some days it's just all one-on-one -on -one, depending on when a child is woken up, who feels like doing what. And I don't mind that independent one-on-one -on -one because I have learned to give over my entire day to school. Um, it's just each kid is learning so differently and pacing differently this year. And a lot of what I wish we could do together to save time doesn't get done together. Um, and it's, it's actually working out really well. Even though it's more time consuming for me, the one-on-one -on -one has been really great for each child. Um, what is the next two? Wait a minute. You colored in, did you do 16? No. You colored in 16 from yesterday, but you didn't do it. Because this is 16. So why don't you do 16 since you already colored it, and then we'll call it. Oh, oh it's, it's doing S. plural words. This is S. It's not, it's saying not one cat, but two cats. Not one hat, but two hats. So it's having you practice the letter S before you make plural words with the letter S. So would you like to just practice S today? Yes. Okay, go for it. 
So it's magic, little magic C, turn down, curve around. For handwriting, we use Handwriting Without Tears. All three kids have different books. And then I have a weekly lesson plan for each kid. And then I print it and put it in the front of their school binders. And he happened to just scribble in yesterday's work, but didn't do it. So we decided he would just catch up today. That's a backwards zip. That's okay. That's why we practice. What's now? Okay. Let's see if you find her. So, the first number we talked about hieroglyphics, where they carved into stone. So, the, we're gonna we're gonna find the areas where that first happened in the whole world. Okay. Yep, Egypt. That's right. So you're going to color Egypt red. Now here's a red pencil, or you can get a red marker. You're going to color Egypt red. Why do you have blue? Well, because this is the Nile River, and you're going to trace it in blue. For social studies, I use Story of the World. It applies to elementary school age. So I have a lesson that I do for each week, one or two lessons, and then just tailor it to each kid. So Jackson just colors in Egypt. He really likes ancient Egyptian history. So we watch a couple of videos sometimes for him. But I really, it doesn't matter much to me if Jackson knows where Egypt is in the world in kindergarten. Um, it just matters that he hears the words and has an understanding of the world and his role inside the world. The potato eaters. What do you notice about this painting versus his other paintings we have on? Uh, they're better. They're better? <laughs> okay, why? Why do you think it's better? Because that was only black and yellow and other colors. And then what do the other paintings have? A lot of colors. A lot of color. And this one is very dark. It's different, right? Yeah. He did that on purpose. He was demonstrating how the peasant class lived. And he took a very long time to paint this, whereas something like this would take him a day or two, or this one a day or two. He spent a long time painting the potato eaters. What does see? See how she has potatoes? See how they're cooking potatoes? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of that painting? What does that painting make you feel? Um, weird. It makes you feel weird? Yeah. I like that answer. Why does it make you feel weird? I don't know. Just because it's dark? Yeah. 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 I think it's good to feel weird and uncomfortable sometimes. It makes us think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which one of these is your favorite? The self-portrait. That was the first one we talked about. Yeah. You like that one? This is Van Gogh. This is what he looked like. Yeah. He's the one that made all of these. The second favorite is none. None? I, like I just only one. have one favorite. I like the bedroom. I only have one favorite and it's that. And this one's Brandon's favorite. That one's Brandon's favorite? Mm-hmm. That's his Lego set. And that one's your favorite. Mm-hmm. I also really like this where's one. Where's Rebecca's favorite? I don't know. I guess we'll have to ask her when she picks up. I think it's the flowers. <laughs> now can I go do my running games? Yes. Do you want to watch me? Sure. And that's our weekly art lesson. It takes about three minutes in kindergarten. And right now I have a gallery on our wall of Van Gogh. It's a Charlotte Mason unit. And I just use blue painter's tape to put it up there. And we just talk about it. And there it comes with a guidebook and everything. But once he's done school, he can move on to uh, reading games or learning games. We do reading eggs and prodigy math. They can um, take a turn of each after they've finished their lessons or whatever we agreed to for the day. So as you saw, kindergarten takes about 45 minutes. That was an extended day because it had social studies and art. Sometimes we just do a reading lesson, one page of math, and we curl up on the couch together. And that's kindergarten too. Quick, snap, done. My
photos were done. Now um, you're going to see me do two of my lessons. But Everybody's I, awake if you want to make it louder. You can make it louder so you can hear this lesson. Let me know when you're ready to do school, okay? Okay. Make Christmas wish lists. Make Christmas wish lists. I made that one. Good job. That's a great project for today. Rebecca's yeah. made hers. Hers is on the counter. I'm not doing it. What do you mean? Okay. I don't know what the... Oh. Are you listening? Yeah. The okay. stove was on behind you to make eggs, okay? Mm -hmm. So, why don't you use this counter here? Okay. Guys, I'm making blueberry pancakes. My nine year old Brandon here loves cooking. So, he often will make everybody some breakfast, which has been a really nice relief for me. Welcome to his cooking channel. Becca, do you want to help me cook? Yes. All right. But when I'm done with my burrito. Okay. Whole cup. Mixes what if you food. find the one third cup and use it two times? Mm -hmm. I know what a one third cup is. Ta da! Oh, you can smell this. Batter should be slightly lumpy. Funny. Okay, go look at your pancakes since Becca's Mom, doing this for you. It's now 9.05 at this point in the morning. I know this because I have an alarm on my phone at 9.05 every day for my oldest to practice his form for karate competition. He has joined a competitive karate team and they have two things they have to work on this year, form and sparring. And so he's just practicing his form as he does most mornings to start his section of the day. Most of our days include the same things when it comes to school. My nine-year-old starts his day with karate form and then sometimes jumps into school if he hadn't gotten up early and already knocked that out. He wanted to play Farkle this morning, which is a, a math game. I use it as a math game for him because it's uh, addition into the thousands place. So it's good for third grade review for him. It's a fun way to kind of kick off his day and to connect with him. My daughter was just coloring. <laughs> she does she uh is very artistic so art for my kindergartner and my third grader might be five minutes but art for her can take hours sometimes because she loves it so much so it's one of the greatest things about how we spend our day is being able to lean into what each kid likes to do we have two small bookshelves in our dining room that have all of our board games every single board game and this helps as a boundary and right now the boundary <laughs> is being tested and we have more games than we can hold on these shelves. So uh, someone asked me for a favorite board games video. I'm going to make that really soon as well as a declutter along with it. The kids need to make some choices about what they want to hang on to. I'm sure they're going to get games for Christmas coming up as well. So we just need to make space for new games to come in and make sure the games that we don't really play anymore go to another family that would really benefit from playing them. One. So fours are 400 points, 500. You're gonna go for it? If you don't get a point in this section, you lose it. Going big or going home, huh? Two. I'm at 200. You want to play another game? I'll play another game with you in a little bit. Sure. Come on. Come on. Why don't we uh, get a little schoolwork done and then see where we are? Right. There's the scripture for this week. Mm -hmm. Read it. Oh, 
Lord shall reign forever and ever. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be a cloud. Okay. I think you're doing a great job. That's, I can't draw an infinite pendulum. Oh, infinity. So infinity all around the clock, so you're demonstrating forever and ever. Yes. Love it. Okay, right the words. I want you to concentrate on staying in the lines. Concentrate on capitalization, space between like words. Like I-E-W. And punctuation at the end. Excellent. Good job. That looks good. See if you can find Exodus, Exodus 15. 15 18, See if you can find that scripture. Okay. Um, Exodus tab. Okay. Yep. Chapter 15. Mm -hmm. so. Um, yeah. 15. Okay, watch what you're doing. Okay, so now 18. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. That was easy. Nice. Guess what? what? You just did all three days yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Provide. Oh, I like Color it. slow and in the box, please. <laughs> I want to do all of it. Well, let's focus on finishing what we needed to finish yesterday and we did get a chance to. So, math. It looks like you're doing 134, 135, and if you do 136, it catches you up to today. And I, can I also do 137? Yes. You said you wanted to map it for the week. And look, you have stuff on Friday. I do that too? You may do, if you want to do all of your math in one day, that's up to you. I want to do everything. And then be off for the rest of the week? I know. That's my... Why don't we take it one page at a time? Okay? Okay. Okay. So, so 134 and 135. Now, the reason I assigned two pages on one day yesterday is because it tells you the answer here. Okay? But I, what I wanted you to do was to study how it did it. So, it's saying 4 into 4 is 1. And then you go 1 times 4 is 4 and you drop it down and you have a 0. Yeah. 4 into... Eight. eight is two. Two times four is eight. Eight. Drop it down. Twenty-eight divided by three. Okay, so three goes into seven. How many times? Two. Mm -hmm. So what's the answer of seven hundred twenty-eight divided by three? Two, four, two, or two. I mean, you're two. So see why there was two pages for yesterday? Yeah. Okay. So this is today's. So if you want to cross this one off, you did this one. Oh, can I do it like? <laughs> sure, that's the way you want to do it. But I won't do it that way. Okay. Can we eat some? Were you just speaking Minionese? What? Were you just speaking Minionese? Banana. One. Remainder one. Okay, where does the remainder go? How do you spell done? Down here. It goes up here. Wait, never mind. So that becomes a 12. Oh. Four into 12. All right, we'll check your weekly sheet and see where page 136 lands you. That's today. Page 30, I gave you two days to do page 30. So you have a spelling test on Friday. We do not follow a prescribed time to the day. It's more of just like a routine or a flow. And at this point in the day, everybody wanted a little break from school. My daughter's gymnastic bar came up from the basement into our main library or living area. And she just wanted to spin. She, she likes to get that energy out. I have this basket here on the living room couch that is my Bible study basket. It's my personal basket of all the things that I have a Bible study. It's a basket I allow to be the container or the boundary, but I've gathered enough stuff along the way that 
this basket's not really doing it for me anymore. It's just too much stuff. We have this coffee table with the part that like folds up into a desk. This is actually where I work to edit YouTube videos, to do any scripting or blogging. Um, sometimes the kids will do schoolwork here. I'll pull this up. And I decided to store my Bible study stuff into the coffee table. It doesn't really hold anything at all. So I decided this would be a good place for me because then I can spread my books out. And then I repurposed this basket to be like my inbox at my desk. And just this little tweak in the day, in the middle of the day when the kids were having some downtime was really helpful for me because now all my stuff has a different place. I like to change things up too. And it gave me a moment to just make something that has been on my mind a little bit more simple for me and a little bit easier to do. Capitalization. Good job. Spell it without looking Why you do your zipper down and up. Z, I. Well, no, look at your zipper so you don't snag it. I'm saying I'm covering the. Z, I, P, P, E, O. Good job. Z, I, P, P, E, O. Potato weed. Yeah, so what does that painting make you feel? Hungry. Makes you feel hungry because they're eating potatoes? Yes. Okay. Compared to the other pieces we have on the wall of his, what does it make you feel? What is different? The lighting. The lighting? The aspect of things. Okay, good. All these paintings are bright and colorful. This one's like dark. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do story of the world because that's kind of quick too. Story Remember we talked about the hieroglyphics? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to do story of the world real quick with us? No. You planning on doing school tonight? No. Talking about hieroglyphics is the first writing and they would do shapes, right? They'd carve it into stone, do shapes. Mm -hmm. So the area, today we're talking about the map and the area in which these first hieroglyphics were discovered. I spelled don't. D-O-N apostrophe T. The first spot was Egypt. So the instruction is to color Egypt red. Mm -hmm. Hey, here's the Nile Delta. That's the Delta. Good job. Deep the Delta. Can I color this for you? Sure. Okay, now color Egypt red. <clears throat> okay. So you know, that's all you need to color for school. So that's done? You're done. That's story of the world. You can color that in on your weekly sheet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, you're looking at history. Back with books, maps, and artwork covered the walls from floor to ceiling. More fan fanatical about adventure and exploration. Fanatical. Fanatical about adventure and exploration. You need to reference this to do your crossword. So, what we're going to do is just take it out and we'll put it up here to give you some help, okay? Mm. And then you can do your crossword. The state west of New Hampshire. West is that one, right? Well, look at your compass rose. Mm. Vermont. So he did the same story of the world social studies lesson that my kindergartner did, except I also added in American history, read aloud, and map work and now he's moved on to some language arts which is IEW for him he's learning how to write and he's writing to learn so that's a big thing with IEW we do not go according to IEW's daily and weekly plan it takes us about two weeks to go through one week of IEW IEW is generally geared for at least this level level a like four fourth grade fifth grade sixth grade even and uh, he's a little more advanced in the language arts side so I'm meeting him where he is with a curriculum that stretches him and challenges him but it's something we sometimes have to do together to not only maintain his interest in what we're doing, but also to ensure that he understands the lessons that are being given. 
So it's really great that someone else is teaching him and I'm kind of there as a facilitator and it's an extension and a growth step for him here in third grade. You wanna do a soup break? Yep. Okay. He wish you like This is exhausting. <laughs> this is not exhausting. exhausting. Let's just see where you landed, shall we? Sure. Okay. Do you wanna do the checks or do you want mommy to do the checks? Can I? Yeah, of course. It's your book. What do I check? So did you watch part two of video four? Boom. Except we started, nope. Yeah. We started at 3.05. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Did you review the LY dress ups and write more? Using your keyword outline, did you begin writing your summary? Did you follow the directions on the checklist and check off every item? Nope. Because you need to finish your draft. 11.51. I sat and chatted for about 20 minutes with my third grader just about questions he had and then cleaned up the table from third grade. Second grade has yet to begun. However, she's actually sitting in this little corner she made in our dining room and she's watching leapfrog math DVDs. So that's one way she absorbs math information it's not just in a book for her so i'm allowing that to be school it's a rainy yucky day and when she was ready i was ready i just had everything set up so that she could easily transition into second grade and so for her this was a math lesson that she was working on in um, second grade math with confidence one thing I have learned about my second grader, specifically my daughter, is that she needs less around her for her to be able to focus. It just helps her. So I have one thing in front of her and I have her school books, her what we call our star bin in a magazine folder for her. The distraction of her younger brother running around, it's just how he is spending his time. And he, you know, he's done school, but he doesn't have learning games right now. My third grader's on the computer for learning games. So my kindergartner's running around doing its thing, but she has my focus for school right now. Uh, you know, it's just when she was ready for school, it happens to be coinciding after lunch and my kindergartner has some energy he needs to burn. So it, it, this is what it is like balancing three kids at home while we're homeschooling, but giving myself over completely to the way they need to flow through their day makes it less stressful for ease and easier for me. It's simpler than the way we used to have our stuff in our life and how we used to spend our time. And so that I can really pull her through her math lesson. It's not one of her strengths. So she and I can really sit together and enjoy as much time and attention as she can give forward into the lesson. And uh, at the same time, I'm making something fun for my kindergartner. 98 cents and 36 Dolls. That's amazing. 41. Yeah, for us. Okay, 40. There we are. You're on lesson 41. Today's just reading. We're going to read Cobweb. Read Cobweb the Cat. And yuck, it says. So Cobweb the Cat. What page is that on? Nine. Okay. Let's hear it. This is Cobweb the Cat. And this is his windmill. Upon a hilltop. This is a rug for his bed. Maybe this. His drumstick doesn't chicken. Because, well, he feeds it and eats that. Or he feeds it and eats that. Yeah. At sunset, Cobweb sits with the bobcat and the cat. Look at the three of them watching the sunset. <laughs> Best of friends. Cobweb. And can you find page 29? Yes. 31, no! There's 29. Okay, so you're working on this page today. Okay. His. So do you, know, do you remember how to do this? You yeah. see where there's tall rectangles? So like the word all has two this tall L's. That's small. Good. Yep. Yeah.
So what is the homophone for tail? Tail. Yes. Spelled differently, different meanings, sounds the same. Check for a capital letter, space between words, and punctuation at the end. Nice job. Ha! Good job on that. And you did this page here? Whoa. <laughs> you did this page here, huh? Yes. Sweetheart, and it you says, did a beautiful and job. And it says some people use sign languages, sign language, pretend to paint your hand with your fingers. That is the sign for paint. Sweetie, handwriting, you did page 52 and 53, so now you're all caught up for today. Good job. Wing the caterpillar, brown and furry caterpillar, and hurry, take your walk to the shady only for a stop. Made no toads by you, made the little birds pass by you, spin and die to live again a butterfly. Can you say it without looking? Brown and furry in a caterpillar. Caterpillar in a hurry. Uh huh. Take your take your walk. Uh huh. To the to the shady shady leaf or stock. May no may no toads spy you. May the little birds pass by you. Spin and I live again a butterfly. You did it. You did it. So that was yesterday. You're doing great. Do you want to color a little more today? Oh, gymnastics. No, watch the doggy. Ranger, you should get up. This is an old schoolhouse and playground. Mm -hmm. Look, they had a seesaw and a well and a, and a swinging bench. And instead of there's the school. And that's like the school, yeah. So it says in a box, in this box, draw a map of the photograph of what you see. Use the shapes to help you draw pictures on your map that stand for things in the photo. I think it came out so good, Becca. Got the swing and the seesaw. Show them dad the well. Dad. Yeah. Yeah. You did a beautiful job. Good job. She wanted to keep going. She loved this map book that she has. I hole punch it. I take it apart and hole punch it into her binder for her. It's a coloring page, so she was all about it. She just did this independently on her own today. The boys are playing Minecraft. They did their learning games on the computer, so now it's just kind of a quiet section of the day for us. Sort of. <laughs> um, and I'm just gonna go rest on the couch and either read a book or watch some Netflix. Kid will probably come over and snuggle with me, and that'll end our afternoon. I do have some errands I want to run, but I don't really want to go out in the rainy rain. Thanks for watching and sharing part of your day with me.